Hey guys, it's Greg, and I've got a short video for you today. I want to ask you a really simple question, but it's really profound at the same time. How do you really know if you really know the Lord? How do you really know if you really know the Lord? I used to have a t-shirt a couple of years ago that I would wear just to try and spark conversations with people, and across the top it said, uh, it said no religion in a big font. And then you had to look kind of close because it was in a darker font. It was a dark t-shirt and it said, just a relationship. Um, and it mentioned that scripture in Isaiah that says, um, you know, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So uh, I would try and wear that just to get people to spark a conversation. Now, what do you mean no religion? Well, so that's the question that we're trying to answer tonight is how do you really know if you really know the Lord? And I thought a good place to start would be taking a look at someone who did not know the Lord. Let's look at a couple of bad examples. The first time the phrase, know the Lord, appears in Scripture is in Exodus 5.2, when Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord, or who is Yahweh, uh, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know the Lord, and moreover, I will not let Israel go. So, even the wicked king here, uh, Pharaoh, the wicked king, even he understood that uh, knowing God was the same thing as obeying God. So we have this kind of Western mindset where we think when we hear the phrase, know the Lord, it means to know about him. But in the Bible, the lyrics, to know him is to love him, really come true. What happened, think about this, what happened in Scripture when the Bible says Adam knew his wife, what happened? Well, she became pregnant. Because in the biblical mindset, to know someone isn't, uh, that doesn't just mean to have knowledge of them, just to be you know, Facebook friends, if you will. It means to, to know them intimately, to be very close to that person. So one who says they know God, but doesn't obey him, isn't living their life in line with his commandments, that proves they really don't know him. So uh, point number one is that even Pharaoh understood that since he did not know Yahweh, he was not going to obey him since those two things are inseparable. You can't know God and not obey God. So who else didn't know the Lord? Let's go to 1 Samuel 2, 12. Give you some background. So Eli, the priest, he was the uh, he was the high priest of Shiloh, and he had two sons who were very wicked men. You've probably heard of, and I may not be pronouncing it right, Hophni and Phinehas. Uh, they were some bad guys, but wouldn't you think they knew the Lord? I mean, these people were. Uh, you might be able to make the argument that say Pharaoh may not have had intellectual knowledge of Yahweh. Let's say he didn't know God in that sense. But there's no way you could say that Hophni and Phinehas did not know the Lord, if, if it refers to uh, intellectual knowledge. Because these guys, they were priests in the tent. Their dad was the priest. Uh, they knew the law. They were taking care of the animal sacrifices. And yet, according to 1 Samuel 2.12, it says the sons of Eli were worthless men. They did not know the Lord. So point number two would be that you can be a pastor with a theology degree or you can be a priest in the tabernacle and still not know the Lord because to know him is to love him. So we know from these two poor examples that knowing, uh, not knowing the Lord really means disobeying him. And uh, another text to support that will be Jeremiah 31 33 and 34. Take a look at the highlighted portion here. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahweh. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And look at verse 34. It says, No longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me from the least of them to the to the greatest, declares Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. So can you see that when the law is written on the heart of a man, then he doesn't need to be told to know God because to know him is to love him and to love him is to obey him. 
I hope you can see that uh, from the text. That's not a stretch. Now let me give you a proof text from the New Testament, directly from the Messiah himself. He says in John 14, 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now he connects the two. He's not saying if you love me, then you should keep my commandments. He's not giving uh, instruction on how to love him. He was saying that you cannot love God apart from keeping his commandments, that these, these two things are inseparable. Loving God and obeying the commandments are the same thing. Now, uh, I've been told recently when I asked someone how many commandments there were, that uh, there were 10. Uh, I... That's, that's what I asked them. So how many commandments do you think there are when I was having this discussion with them? They said, there's only 10, right? Well, this was someone who has been in church longer than I've been alive. And uh, I want to show you a, a proof text here. The so-called 10 commandments are not even called 10, they're not even called commandments in Deuteronomy chapter 5, which is where they're listed. Look at Deuteronomy 5.1. Moses summoned all Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the rules that I speak in your hearing today. And you shall learn them and be careful to do them. And right here, you wind up hearing what people call the Ten Commandments. But as Moses introduces them here, let me scroll down a little bit so you can see them. These are the same ones mentioned in Exodus 20, but they're not even called commandments. They're called statutes and rules. So, no, there's not... Ten Commandments. Um, ten Commandments were written on the stone tablets, but they're a lot more than that. Uh, many people accept the official count as being 613. That's a pretty common. If you Google it, uh, you'll probably come up with the answer. And of those 613, you, you'll hear commandments such as uh, don't commit incest. That's, these are things that are not in the Ten Commandments, but are other commandments. Um, don't have sex with animals. It's not permissible for a man to dress like a woman or vice versa. Uh, don't commit homosexual acts. That's something that's not in the Ten Commandments, but it is a commandment in the law. And there are other commandments that are completely ignored by a lot of Christianity. Things like uh, eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster. That's an abomination, the Bible says. Uh, the Sabbath commandment that says you can't do any business, you cannot buy or sell on the Sabbath day, and Sabbath is Saturday, not Sunday, uh, on our calendar. So if you truly know the Lord, then you're not going to do these things. Uh, and if, if you didn't know that these were commandments and that you were obligated to do these things until you're watching this video, then obeying His commandments is how you can get closer to Him, how you can get to know Him better. And I don't want you to take my word for it. Let the Scripture say... That exactly. Let's go to 1 John 2, 3, and 3 through 5. Let's read that. It says, By this we know that we have come to know Him. And that's the title of this video. How do you really know that you really know the Lord? Well, John has the answer. He says, By this we know that we have come to know Him if we keep His commandments. And look, at, he puts it as plain as anybody could put it. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So this is how we know that we know him. If you want to really know that you really know Yahweh, then you're going to be someone who embraces the commandments, uh, keeps the Sabbath day, observes the Ten Commandments, and the other 603, including the Holy Days, uh, celebrating Passover, the Feast of Trumpets, keeping uh, unleavened bread, these type of things. These are all commandments that Yeshua, Jesus, and John, and, and the writers of the Old Testament and the New Testament all agree that loving Him is... Knowing, knowing him is loving him, and loving him is keeping his commandments. I'm just going to keep reiterating that point. And uh, to sum things up in this quick video, I want to take you to Matthew 7, 21 through 23, a very grave warning given by the Messiah. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father 
who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, in Jesus' name? Didn't we cast out demons in Jesus' name? And didn't we do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, notice Notice the people who identified him as their Lord. Let's think about that for a second. Do Muslims identify Yeshua as Lord? Do Hindus? Do Buddhists? No. This is a warning specifically to Christians. Uh, what kind of Christians are we talking about? Are we talking about Americans that claim Christianity but don't actually do anything? No. We're talking about Holy Spirit-filled believers. These are people who can cast out demons. Uh, these are people that have the gift of prophecy. These are people that do miracles. That phrase, many mighty works, look at it for yourself. It means miracles, and all of these are done in your name. So we're not talking about, you know, what you call pew potatoes, or people that only come to church on Christmas and Easter. We're talking about spirit-filled people who accept Jesus as their Lord, and yet many of those people are, are going to be told on the Day of Judgment that they never really knew Him. Now, the question is, what is it that separated them from knowing Him? And the answer is right there in the Scripture. It's lawlessness. There it is. Lawlessness. Not keeping the commandments in the law. And that's not my definition. That's what it says in 1 John 3, 4. Take a look at it here in the King James. Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is breaking the law. And that word there, uh, to go back to the ESV, sin is lawlessness. Breaking the commandments contained in the Torah. That is going to be the thing that is going to cause Yeshua to tell people, I never knew you. Uh, so don't be told I never knew you? This is a very, very important question. How do you know if you really know the Lord? Uh, don't be told, I never knew you after spending your whole life in church, giving 10% of your income, singing in the choir, running the sound, playing an instrument. None of those things are the commandments of God. What he wants is obedience and not sacrifice. He doesn't want you to sacrifice your time and energy in cleaning up a building if you're breaking his law. Know the Lord. To know him is to love him, and if you love him, you will keep his commandments. Thanks for watching.